It's your old pal Jordan the Lion and your old pal Ja. How y'all doing today? I hope you said great. Today we are going to have a blast. Ja and I are going to spend the night at a famous creative bungalow, I guess I would say. And uh, it's a place we vlogged once before and the owners contacted me and invited us to come back, see more of the property. And well, hey, let me just tell you, we're gonna sleep at Jim Croce's house. Days with Jordan the Lion, it begins right now. We're going back to Lindell, Pennsylvania, Ja. You were there with me last time. So don't mess around with Jim, okay? getting close I'm excited I didn't get past the yard last time we were here we have arrived in Lindell so Jim Croce wrote some of his most famous songs of his short career here. Not really a short career, but I guess in the mainstream, very short. We knew him for Time in a Bottle, Operator, Bad Bad Leroy Brown. And this was where he hung out, lived with his family, where his son would have lived when his son was first born. Jim Croce, Songwriters Hall of Fame inductee and singer Croce was best known for upbeat urban ballads and songs about the common man. Hits like Time in a Bottle, Bad Bad Leroy Brown, You Don't Mess Around with Jim and Operator, Top the Singles Music Chart propelling Croce to national fame. A two-time Grammy nominee, he wrote many of his most successful and timeless songs in the farmhouse here for his tragic death in a plane crash. So last time we came out here, we talked about the history of Jim and how he had been a real man of the people, been a truck driver, he had hung out at demolition derbies, and he just, being on the road, playing in juke joints, wasn't making money. And then finally, on his uprise, passed away on his last tour in a plane crash, doing a makeup show from the year before. Now he had an apartment here with his wife Ingrid and they moved in here in 1970. They were living in New York before this and they realized that they weren't making any money, not enough to survive and they were performing together. So they decided to move out here and Jim started performing around here, got day jobs, trash man, things like that, and would make a lot of friends while he was out performing. Even though he wasn't making money, he was making friends with people like Bonnie Raitt, Jimmy Buffett, Randy Newman, James Taylor, and they would come hang out and stay here and party here. So, really cool that we get to take a look, so let's go. He also took a lot, I mean a lot of his photos from or that were used for his albums and press photos here. So they actually had a book about Jim's life here, Time in a Bottle, and we're gonna match up a lot of photos from here, including this one, hopefully. So let me show you where Jim's apartment was. It's really cool. I mean, to know that he moved himself out here with his family and this is where he had just, you know, when he wasn't working, these are where he spent his time thinking, writing those poetic songs. Really, truly happy here. 
people that own the house have turned or are in the process right now of turning the Jim Croce apartment into an Airbnb. And they, I just missed it, but they hosted a Jim Croce festival here on the lawn right here. And they also have an auction house right here and they're turning that into a partial antique store. So here was Jim's apartment. He was in apartment seven. And there's some great footage online of Jim's wife Ingrid here after like 30 years walking around saying how she could remember looking out that window there next to the door. And their bedroom was right upstairs. She told a story about how he would go on tour and then come back really with hardly any money. And one of the times he came back, she asked him about it and he got upset and went downstairs and was down here in this room and wrote, I'll just have to say I love you in a song. So let me show you one of the most memorable things probably all of us know if you have Jim's albums. This was, this was kind of a outhouse, pig house at one point. But this is where Jim took his famous album cover photo right in there. His wife Ingrid said that he always had plans before they moved away from here to turn this into an office. So there are photos, of course, of him right there from Don't Mess Around With Jim. And we can look inside. Wow, the roof is caving in, but wouldn't that have been something to, I mean, you couldn't even, I guess you could stand in there to take the photo, probably wouldn't be safe, but he would have been standing basically right in here where we are, looking out that for the photo of Don't Mess Around With Jim. How cool is that? Now the back of the house, Jim's son, AJ, who, boy, did he have a rough life. He was just on a show recently. I think it was like the Today Show or something like that, talking about how when his dad passed away, his mother had a boyfriend that treated him terrible and used to beat him. And he lost his sight, partially lost his sight. Finally, I, I believe did regain some of it. And he tells those stories in an interview back here and he talks about while sitting back there about how for years people wanted him to record his dad's songs and he just couldn't do it he just didn't not that he wasn't connected to it he just felt like it wasn't he couldn't go there and you know now he hit a point in his life where he felt like he should so let's go inside and check out Jim's apartment which is also our apartment for the night and your buddy Jaws in there. Only reason he's not out here running around with us is right when we showed up, they said, just yesterday we found a beehive in the ground around front, so I just didn't want him running around while we were doing this. But you're gonna love this experience, I promise you. This is such a cool thing. I mean, my favorite song of Jim's is one that's not even a hit. It's called Lover's Cross. Oh man. <laughs> Go listen to that one. We're gonna go through this way because the uh, they're working on the front door. And this is how probably most people would enter. This is the entrance through the kitchen. Look who's waiting. Hi. Are you enjoying Jim Kirchie's apartment? Right on. <laughs> So as soon as you walk in, you have the kitchen here. Now it's funny if you look up any of the stories, 
of people that hung out here like Arlo Guthrie and stuff, they would say like, yeah, you know, Jim, loved, he was a real social guy. He loved to have people over and they would basically get high and they would make dandelion wine out here and drink that and just yuck it up all night. And he liked to invite people from like different jobs and social classes in life and just kind of like throw a hodgepodge of people together and see what happened, see what kind of conversations would come out. And then he would invite them all to like spend the night. <laughs> so as soon as you walk in from the kitchen entrance, which is what we just came in through there, you can see out the window. Now I told you that story about how Jim and Ingrid had that conversation about money and he didn't want to talk about it. And so he came downstairs and wrote, I just have to say I love you in a song. He would have done that right here. And they actually have a guitar here for guests to play. And since they just had the festival here, they left me a shirt and they had the house open to all the visitors to be able to come in and live like Jim. And take a look at this. There's the guitar and they have an ovation guitar here. A lot of Jim material, including Ingrid's book, his wife, you even have the music from don't, you don't mess around with Jim, but, and I, I, I want to believe that little nook right there is where he wrote that song. I just want to believe it. But right above is the cover of You Don't Mess Around With Jim. Looking out that, that we just looked out. How cool is that? And then this is the window that she would have said that she used to look out and see him outside of. And then I will take you up and show you their bedroom and the people that are doing the Airbnb here, the, the homeowners even have a record player. I mean, it's just a cool experience. You just get the whole feel. So I like this because it's kind of the Amsterdam staircase, the really tight staircase that I remember from being in Holland. Here's their bedroom, our bedroom for the night. There's a closet over there. And then the bathroom right in here, the shower and a dog and a nice view outside. This is so cool to get to stay here because I love Jim Croce's music and especially to know that he wrote some, he went through like a period of like a year where he was feeling disillusioned, just kind of felt like if he wrote anything, it would be taken advantage of and he would really get no money out of it for what he had created, just bad deals and things like that apparently. But he would, when he started writing again, it was all here. Now the family did move away from here for a short time to another um, farmhouse in Coatesville. I believe that's what's called Coatesville. And then they moved to San Diego and they were living in San Diego at the time of Jim's passing. One thing I do love about the, uh, the suite though is that it has those original farm floors with like the gaps in them. So to me that just, that feels so natural. And when you see that, you just know this is the exact floor that Jim would have walked on. In 1970, 71, 72, he wouldn't have worn Jordan 1s, but would have used that bathroom. Wow. Pretty cool. So let me show you now the book that they left us, and we'll try and match up some of those photos here around the farm in the town. I do remember now that he 
wrote time in a bottle sitting at the kitchen table and a lot of you don't mess around with Jim at the kitchen table so very historic spot and just think of you know I mentioned he used to have all these people hanging out and playing music Jimmy Buffett and James Taylor Bonnie Raitt Randy Newman they very likely would have been hanging out in this room But I did also happen to find a photo of Jim standing right outside this door. So let me show you that. So it was actually, as you would go down to the front doors, they asked me not to open this outer door because that's what's broken, they're working on it. But there would have originally been a screen door there and Jim is standing there with the screen door open and you can see the window and the door frame behind him. It's actually this picture here on the cover of Ingrid's book. You can tell if you look at the bottom of the, the doors, even at the outside door, it's the same with the uh, little panels, but the one inside is the same way. So there, you can see that. And that's the lower part. So I think that definitely would have been right there. So I told you they left me a shirt. How cool is that? In fact, when I posted my video, that's how I found out about, you know, this place was that I posted the video and the homeowners contacted me through the channel in the comments section and said that I was welcome to come out here. So check this out. Stay Crochified. Pennsylvania Historical Marker Dedication Ceremony. Oh man. Cool. I love it. I love it. That's so cool. And then of course the album cover that we've already kind of talked about, but I just like, if you look at that picture and you look right above his head, you can see that there's a slat of wood going across there. <laughs> That's still there. As crazy as that is, when you get close, it's right there. That same exact piece. I can't even begin to tell you how cool it is to actually see this in person. I have seen this cover, this image, so many times in my life and to be standing right where he was is just, it's amazing. That poor outhouse. I did want to mention they are doing a, uh, a GoFundMe to try and repair this because it's so iconic and everything. So I'll have that link in my description box and pinned comment. Okay, so coming outside the house, their doorway that we did not go in is right there kind of in front of us. If you look at this photo right here of Jim and Ingrid, you can see that house, that tree is gone, but you can see the window that we were talking about that Ingrid used to look out and the doorway right over here. And then that barn right over there is still there, except it has doors that are closed right now boom that is that they would have been walking right here in front of us so next we have this photo and you'll notice that they're sitting on a bench with stone like a stone bottom and then across the street there are kind of fences I think I think that was taken right here. The reason I think that is because they told me as I was arriving that this piece of land right next to Jim's house and the four plots of land, the four houses worth of land all the way up this road were all owned by the same guy and he used to rent them out to like artist types. So it was basically like a street party all the time. and. Knowing that, that makes me think that there used to be a fence over there. And if you look in this picture, you see there's like a tree hanging over their head while they're sitting there. I think that was that tree right here where that stump is. I think that's what was hanging over their head. And I think that the bench used to be right there. And 
and I've looked all over the property. That's the only two of those left. So I think that would have been right there. Plus, I'm kind of noticing if you look right to the right of Jim's back, there's kind of an upward slope embankment. That kind of looks like that could be this section right over here to me, if it were unkempt and overgrown. That's what I think. So the Croce's house they stayed in was over there. This was right next to it. And I think they were sitting on the bench right here. Look at all of this. He took photos with some of this in the background also. Actually, take a look at this. Here they are, it's a different angle and you can see the rock wall behind them. That makes sense because we were just right there. There's the rock wall. So that probably was exactly where they took that photo, that rock wall behind them. That's very cool. They should put a piece of board there to make a bench just in honor of them. I believe this photo was taken out here too. I just don't know exactly where it would have been taken. That's something we need Ingrid here for. This is her photography book, so she would be able to answer all those for us. Okay, we got another photo matchup. Take a look at that window right there. Kind of looks an awful lot like the window right here where Jim and Ingrid are walking past. They would have had their clothesline and they have a clothesline right there <laughs> now, but it looks like it would have been more right there in front of the outhouse. It's really cool to match that one up. Well, my friends, we're gonna call it a day. I hope you enjoyed the tour of Jim Croce's farmhouse and the crazy things that happened here. It was really cool of the owners to let me come and see it and stay here and just kind of feel Jim and you totally feel Jim out here. So look into it. Um, I will put a link on my video here in the description box and in the pinned comment on how you can get in touch or stay with them. And if you're new here, please hit the like button, please subscribe and please ring the bell for notifications. We'll see you all next time, but from Jim Croce's farmhouse, have a great night and goodbye. And don't mess around with jaw.